uh, let's talk a little Saints here. We're, we have the Cannon coming up, and I've got two different Saints conversations that I want to have this hour. Uh, the first is regarding the cornerback problem, which is a major problem. Uh, Kat Terrell giving you some names to look out for. And then uh, the other conversation has to do with the Saints' uh, offense last year. And I guess why, like, because there seems to be this narrative cropping up now that the Saints' offense wasn't that good last season. And it's weird because it is right in a lot of ways, but it's hard to square with if you just look at the points per game and yards per game. Like, wait, you scored 30 points a game and 376 per. Like, 30 points a game, that was top five in the NFL. How was that offense not good? But Nick Underhill being the incredible researcher that he is, has found some numbers that uh, potentially tell a bit of a different story about how inefficient that offense was at times last year, especially given who the Saints have been in the Breeze era, the problems that it created, and how they can maybe be assuaged this season. Uh, so we'll get there. But first, let's talk cornerbacks here, because right now the New Orleans Saints are in trouble, right? And and, and it's one of the big reasons why I'm, why, why I'm, why I'm holding back so much on this Saints team, while 9-8 and eight kind of feels like the record. Although when we played the game the other day, I think it landed on 10-7 and seven if Rodgers uh, does not play in that first game for the Green Bay Packers, which that story appears to be in a holding pattern as well. So I don't know. Like I, I, I've always said that I think Rodgers is probably into playing for the Packers. It's feeling like that is going to uh, end up being the case. Uh, we'll, we'll see, though. We'll see. But the reason why I, I feel so bad about the Saints right now is, look, man, the most important positions in modern-day football, it's a quarterback one. And then after you get there, I think the debate would be between an elite pass rusher and a dominant cornerback. Uh, of course, there's the Andy Reid quote that we built a lot of this thought process off of, which is like, give me a quarterback, give me an elite corner, Give me an elite pass rusher, and I can figure everything else out. Uh, and he's proven that in his career, right? Well, as far as quarterback goes, that's a major question mark. Is it James or Taysom? You don't know. As far as pass rusher goes, you think you have the guy in Cam Jordan, and he's been the guy for so long. Hopefully last year was a blip, not a sign of a uh, of a decline, of like a continued bear market. Uh, hopefully he can, Cam can bounce back. Um, and then look, I... I, I I mean, I don't know, Danny, you, you're, you're the big hoot in here. What are your expectations for, like, a Peyton Turner year one, especially after witnessing Marcus Davenport really not have much of an impact the last few years? Um, it's really hard for me to get my hopes up for Peyton Turner year one. I think I think if, I think think if he can fill in nicely considering Davenport gets injured often. So he's going to be expected to, to perform, but, yeah, I don't know. I think he can do. I can think. I think I can see him doing nice. Uh, okay, okay. So you're maybe a bit. You're you're feeling a bit better on uh, Turner than I am. He definitely feels like more of a project. I think what's going to affect him as well is he could play really well, like against the run, and it's not going to make any headway with the fans. And that is one of the reasons why you drafted him was to be a three down defensive end. It's one of the unique parts about the Saints. They seem to really value that in Cam Jordan, Marcus Davenport, and Peyton Turner. None of those guys or what you consider pass rush specialists, they are every down defensive ends, which I like that depth. And, and, and as we'll get to in the offensive conversation, the defense is going to be critical in setting up Jameis and Taysom, whoever it is, in the offense. Uh, but so, so even then, so you have major questions at quarterback. You have questions at defensive end, though you've committed a lot of resource there. you got Cam Jordan. you got two first-round picks, really three, when you look at Davenport and Turner. So that position needs to be successful. It won't be a lack for lack of trying if it's not. Uh, but then you get to cornerback. And I, I look, I think Marshawn Lattimore is a dominant shutdown corner uh, per the terms of this conversation. The problem is I don't know if Marshawn Lattimore is going to be available come week one. The other problem is I don't know uh, when you look at all the other names on this roster. I mean, you got guys like C.D. Deuce, Patrick Robinson. Like, you have other names that you recognize, but they are guys that are better – suited in different roles than playing on the outside as your CB2. You want Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the slot in a playmaking position. P-Rob's best moments in his career have come from the slot as well. Uh, so these are guys that have proven not to do very well on the outside. So if that's maybe the second most important position in terms of winning football games, 
Uh, well, the Saints need help, and they need help in a big way. And Kat Terrell dove into free agency, and she looked at some of the names that are still available. You'll recognize some of these names. You won't. Um, Steven Nelson is a guy uh, that, that, that started with uh, Pittsburgh, or he actually signed a pretty big deal in Pittsburgh. Three years, 25 mil back in 2019. He ends up getting released last year after he has a steep drop-off from 2019. Allowed just a 65 passer rating. For the Steelers in 19, that gets bumped up to 97 last season. I will say this, though, with Nelson. One thing that is intriguing, he's only 28 years old. He's got five years of starting experience. There is uh, some potential there, not just for this year, but maybe even into the future. Like with a lot of these names, what you're going to see is they're older, like Josh Norman, right? 33 years old. Um, Pretty good when he played last season. Actually only allowed an 84 passer rating for the Bills which was down 40 points from what he did with Washington in 2019 where he was absolutely terrible. Signed a one-year, $6 million deal, so you can get him cheap. But a guy like Josh Norman, that is for sure a one-year rental, right? A stopgap, a little Band-Aid over the wound. A guy like Steven Nelson has the potential to maybe stick around for a little bit. Um, uh, The the, the older name that I think I would like best and most would like best and, and and partially it's probably just because I'm a dumb lizard brain and it carries a little bit of, like, cachet with it. That's Richard Sherman, right? I mean, who doesn't know about Richard Sherman? Now, last year, injuries defined um, a lot of his years. He only started in five games. And even in those five games, he wasn't good, giving up a 116 passer rating versus just 63 the previous year. He's coming off of a pretty big deal I don't think that market's there for him anymore. And look, I'm not too worried about the Saints being able to affect like a one-year, $5 million deal. They still have the Ramchick contract uh, to, to potentially extend. They're still going to have to rework a couple other contracts to get these draft pick signs. But they have the avenue to do so. So Richard Sherman would be an older name at 33 years old that I'm definitely a bit interested in. There's other guys, uh, Buster Scrine. Um Nothing too great there with the Bears last year. He was all right. 32 years old, falls into that same thing. DJ Hayden at 30 years old, uh, coming over from the Jags. Brian Poole. Uh, Another name that could maybe stick around um, uh, would be Poole at just 28 years old and was uh, okay last year for the Jets. Actually put up really good numbers, but he did play in the slot. So like C.D. Deuce and like... um, uh, why am I blank right now? Like CD Deuce and oh, and like P. Rob and company. Like I don't know if he's best suited to being on the outside. Brashad Breland, who started for the Chiefs last couple of years out there as well. And do you know who the last name on this list is? Nikhail Roby Coleman, twenty nine years old, the man responsible for the Nola no call. Started fifteen games last year. Uh, was not very good. A major drop off. Um, excuse me, played in 50 games, started seven, um, but a major drop-off from two years ago for Coleman. I mean, kicked the tires. You could definitely get him cheap. It was His last contract was one year, $1.35 million, but uh, a name that Saints fans, I don't know how happy they would be about Roby Coleman maybe joining the squad. So those are some names to look out for. I, I know I threw a lot at you. I, I, I would think the ones that seem most exciting to me are probably Steven Nelson, the young gun who could maybe stick around, uh, come from Pittsburgh, Josh Norman, who seems to still have some left in the tank, actually improved. The only person on this list that improved from 2019 to 2020, and then Richard Sherman, obviously because the experience he brings. Like I, I still think he can get it done enough on the field, not be dominant, but get it done enough to be CB2. And he brings playoff experience, leadership, all of these other things to the squad. So those would be the three names that I would look for the Saints, hopefully to make some forward move on. I do not think that they can remain stagnant. Uh, for much longer in this cornerback market. Otherwise, they will be in trouble once this season starts. Um, all right, when we get back here in OTB, I got some Pell talk, and I want to dive into that Saints offensive conversation where the cannon comes on at a 32 blocks right here on Off the Bench. 